There's not many internet protocols out there that are as controversial as BitTorrent is. This nifty little networking feature allows you to do decentralized file transfers to people all over the world without the need to set up a dedicated web server. But a lot of major studios that hold the copyright to various forms of media really don't like torrenting because as you probably knew already, a lot of people use these torrents to download movies, TV shows, and other forms of media for free instead of paying for streaming subscriptions or pay-per-views. Now, for years, the go-to method that the big Hollywood studios used for fighting this so-called piracy was to lurk in the torrent swarms. This is the collective group of peers and cedars, the people that are downloading and sharing the files in the torrent, and because this is a peer-to-peer -peer system, every peer's IP address can be seen there. So the lawyers or some person that was hired by these corporations would write down a list of all the IP addresses they saw trying to download a particular movie or TV show, especially the IP addresses that are based in America or some other country where copyright law is actually enforced. And then they go to the ISP saying, hey, Someone is illegally downloading this movie. They're stealing a new yacht from my family. Now we're going to have to settle for the silver finish instead of the gold one. Unless you, Mr. Internet Provider, you need to threaten your customer, the person that's actually doing this downloading, with a service cancellation or some fees or legal action. You know, whatever you got to tell them to make them stop with their piratey ways. And if you don't, then our lawyers will just come for you instead because you're the one providing the internet service. So therefore, you are enabling piracy. And of course, the ISP is not going to take the bullet for you. So they're going to bend the knee and they're going to try and discourage you from torrenting that content and perhaps even try to block all torrent traffic from you in general, which is really unfair because a lot of cool non copywritten stuff like Linux distros are typically downloaded through torrents. So to get past this injustice, I'm going to show you how to bind your torrent client to a VPN connection and an anonymous VPN connection at that in order to mask the contents of your traffic and your IP address in the torrent swarm so that you and your ISP cannot be identified. And of course, you should only use these techniques to download non-copywritten data like Linux ISOs. Okay, so first, you're going to need a VPN and I'm gonna be using Mulvad because it's one of the only VPN services available that really try to maximize your anonymity. And they do this by first and foremost, not asking you for a phone number, your email address, your name, address, or anything else like that when you apply for the service. And you're also able to pay for the service anonymously with cash or with Monero XMR. So you can essentially leave no paper trail behind when you're using Mulvad VPN. But if you're using another VPN service, then these steps I'm gonna show you are gonna more or less be compatible. I just love Mulvad, so that's what I'm gonna use. Next, we need to create an open VPN configuration file for our VPN service. Now, most of the time, this is something that gets configured on a per server basis. So you might end up having multiple of these files. I believe with NordVPN, for example, when you go through the OpenVPN configuration, they just automatically download a configuration file for all of the servers that they have in their entire network. Um, but you don't really need to do all of that. You can just pick out one of the servers that you wanna use. I guess ideally one that's in a country that's not going to give you any guff about copyright. But anyway, here in Mulvad's configuration file generator, you see that first we gotta select our platform. So I'm using Linux, of course. And then you select the particular server that you wanna use. And then also the city location. I guess for some of them, like London, you can select all cities and maybe it'll just randomly output through uh, those different exit points. And then there's also advanced settings that you can configure, but for this, we can just leave this at their default. And then you need to enter in your Mulvad account number. Uh, so this is a random number that just gets generated for you whenever you go to the account page. 
And then what you're supposed to do is write down that number and add some time to it, you know, save it because then you're basically putting some money on it. I think it's like five euros per month uh, or something like that. So you put in that account number here and then that's essentially what does the authentication within OpenVPN to actually connect you to Mulved. And then you download the zip archive and you wanna make sure that the update resolve.conf file or update resolve comp file is placed inside of Etsy OpenVPN, that directory, and you also wanna make sure that it's executable in there so that everything is going to work correctly. And then you can just go ahead and run the OpenVPN command and point it to the Mulvad configuration file for the particular server that you downloaded. Now, when you start up a VPN in Linux, you might notice that there's now a new network interface that got created. Usually it's going to have the name TUN0 or something similar to that, maybe TUN1, TUN2, but this is a virtual network interface that's being used for our VPN. So in order to make sure that all of our torrent traffic, or this also applies for any application if you just want to tunnel traffic for a specific application through the VPN. But anyway, to make sure that all of it is going through that particular network interface, we need to make sure that we're binding our application to that network interface. Now in Qubit Torrent, there's actually a dedicated setting right in the application to do this. You want to go to Tools, Preferences, and then select the Advanced tab and you want to select the network interface option and then change this to ton zero. And then you need to apply it if this is a new change you're making and hit okay. This is going to ensure that all of Qubit Torrent's traffic goes through the VPN. And this is actually a lot better than the SOX5 proxy approach that the different VPN providers will usually recommend. They tell you to go into connection and then go to proxy server and then set this to SOX5 and then put in the host, which is usually a dedicated list of uh, like certain SOX5 proxies that the VPN provider gives you and then put in your username and password. Uh, this is a lot better because for one, it's less likely that it's going to fail. Like it all depends on how the software of your torrent application is set up. But like if the proxy server fails here, it might automatically just default to your clear web or your regular IP address. Uh, so that's one problem that you're avoiding. This also gives you the option of using more VPN providers for torrenting in the first place because a lot of them don't even have the SOX5 compatibility. And like I said, if they do, there's usually just a handful of dedicated SOX5 servers that the VPN companies dedicate to torrenting and they're usually throttled and they're also the ones that most people are using because that's what people find when they Google how to use XVPN with Y torrent application. Um, and this SOX5 proxy setting also probably wouldn't work with Mulvad because you don't have a username and a password to use uh, for authentication. It's just that random, account number or authentication token. So there you go, lots of reasons to use that over the SOX5 approach. And this setup is also better than just running all of your network traffic, your web traffic updates and everything else through a VPN, because if you're torrenting a lot of data and there's plenty of seeders for whatever you're downloading, then the bandwidth for your VPN is quickly going to get taken up by the torrenting application um, as long as you're also giving it, you know, full speed and full access to downloads and everything else like that. Um, but yeah, like it's going to get completely taken up and maybe it won't happen in the rare case where you're using a really fast VPN on a pretty slow internet connection because obviously your weakest link is gonna be your bottleneck. But if you've got something like gigabit fiber and there's a good chance that the VPN connection is just gonna end up being your bottleneck. And if you're surfing the web while you're torrenting, then that extra traffic is just gonna slow everything down a bit. But with this setup, you can just push your BitTorrent application through the VPN only and then continue surfing the web without a VPN connection. Or maybe 
you want to use multiple VPNs at once. So then you can bind the torrent application to one VPN and use another one through your web browser. It'd be like a ton zero and ton one, ton two, and so on uh, configuration. And the possibilities with this are endless. And lastly, you just want to do a quick check to make sure your IP address is shielded in the torrent swarm. So make sure that your real IP is not being displayed here. And then you're all set to download your Linux distros anonymously and nothing else. Make sure you don't download copyrighted material because that would be bad. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can buy my awesome merch or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.